all right welcome back so in this video i'm going to show you guys how to open up different formats of models into mastercam and what's the difference between each of them and then i'm also going to show you how to fix it up so it looks good on mastercam as well because not all imports are actually going to import right okay let's go ahead and get started so first come over here under file and select open now for your dvd you want to go to exercise six files folder in the exercise files folder and open up exercise number six and you should see a whole bunch of models for my sake i'm going to go to computer and exercise six files right here and i'm going to see these files right here now i'm going to go ahead and make them a little bit bigger large icons okay and you're going to only see one preview only if you have solidworks on your computer so if you have solidworks on your computer there's one solidworks file you'll be able to preview it to know that this is your exercise six file okay now you'll also see a step file a parasolid file and an IGIS file so those are the most known ones now there's plenty of other models that you can import into MeshroCam, but these are the three main ones other than solidworks that people usually import and i want to show you guys how to open up each of them so first let's get started with for example the step file i'm going to select step and then go to options right here select options now these options are very important to go over before importing that part into MeshroCam. it will allow you to basically say hey do i want to import it as a solid or as trimmed surfaces so basically each side would be a surface by itself you can also opt in to have the edges show up basically all the curvature everything around as geometry so any kind of curve edge point it will show up as part of the model as well so it won't just be a solid it would be, it would be also curves will show up you can also uh, you opt in if you want to see the color from that wherever you saved it as for example we saved it from solidworks and solidworks we had it at a certain color for example i'll go to solidworks right now and you can see it's a grayish color for the block it's just a regular default solidworks color so i'm able to now open that up as that gray color if you select this option as well and there's some information for that over here as well it was created on september 3rd for example and uh, the size of the file as well uh, in solidworks 2016. now i have the model saved in 2014 i just opened it up in 2016 okay go ahead and select OK and go ahead and select open and there you go you can see that it, it imported in gray color and you can see the geometry all around your part as well now I'm gonna go to view and select isometric view now right away you notice that this is not in the right view and that's because those were the views that we saved it in from SolidWorks from SolidWorks I saved it with Y X and Z related to this part same as here for example look at z it's up and down to this side which is the front view but if i go to solidworks you'll notice that z is on the same side as that but it's on the front view so it's because i have my x y and z different in solidworks and that's going to be the case for most modeling program they will not be the same for modeling that they are for a mastercam mastercam always has the z going up and down for other modeling programs that might have it in different ways okay so it just really depends how you created your part so i'm going to go ahead and minimize solidworks and let me go ahead and create a new file all right and this time i'm going to go ahead and go to open and i'm going to open up the parasolid file and then select options you will notice that it's a little bit different options but not too much different for example i can only select a solid or trim surfaces with no sub options and I can have the option to select edge curves as well to make sure the geometry imports as well. You can also use a system color for imported solid if you want to keep it at gray. And here it's a little bit different file information. So the parasolid is a little bit more friendly with SolidWorks, so it saves a little bit more information for you. For example, the X, Y, and Z. Now remember, I really wanted it to be X and Y being five by five, and then Z being the two. So I already know that I need to move my part a little bit after importing that into mastercam go ahead and select ok and select open and you notice that it imported the same way with the geometry okay if i go to isometric view you'll see that it imported the same exact way with the geometry so go ahead and go to file i'm going to go back and select new and then go to file open again i'm going to go to computer and exercise files and so you'll notice that step and parasolid are very similar. Now let's go to IGIS and see what happens. Go ahead and go to options. 
And you'll see the options are a little bit different here for iGIS files. And that's because it saves them in a different format. So you can see that send errors to a, the screen. Basically, it pops up if there's an error. It would be a pop-up on your screen. Or it would create a file with all the error codes in that. Now, that's helpful if you want to send that out to MasterCam or uh, SolidWorks or wherever you save the iGIS file at so you would understand where the errors or why the errors are happening. Now, the trim surface handling. Now, you notice that you don't have an option for solid. It's only for surfaces. And you have a few options there. Use preference flag XYZ if, if unspecified, preference flag UV if unspecified, so and then always read uh, XYZ or UV level. So I always like to keep it at the top one. Override with file value tolerance if you have tolerances specified in SOLIDWORKS, for example, you can have that checked. For our sake, I'm just going to go ahead and select OK and open. And it's going to open that up a little bit different this time. You notice that there is no geometry. And not just that, these are surfaces. You can see that I can select each of them separately. That's because they are all surfaces. And if you really want to test that out, go ahead and select one surface and hit the delete button. And you will notice that you can see right through it. So it did not create a solid. It creates it as a surface. So remember that anytime you import an IGES file in here, it comes in as a surface. So let me go ahead and go to new again. And this time I'm just going to import the regular SOLIDWORKS file. So go ahead and go to open and select the exercise six SOLIDWORKS file. And again, select options and you'll see the options over here are very similar to the parasolid. I'm going to keep it as solid, select edge curves. Okay. And import solid history. If you like, I like to use system colors for important. Uh, importing solids and then go ahead and select OK and open. And there you go. So this is very similar to the step and to very similar to the parasolid. I'm going to go ahead and place this on isometric view and let's go ahead and learn how to fix this. So obviously, as you can see, all of these are uh, in the wrong planes. I need to make this my front view and the other side my top view. Let's go ahead and learn how to do that. So first, what I need you to do is go to transform over here. And then come over here under the translate, select the down arrow, and there's a translate to plane. Now, this used to be called translate 3D. So if you're used to translate 3D, that's what's new. So it just changed names to translate to plane. So go ahead and select translate to plane, and it will ask you to select all the entities that you want to uh, select so you can move the entire part. Now, remember, you want to make sure to select the solids as well as the geometry. This time, we're going to select them a little bit different. If you come over here to the right, we haven't really used much of these. Now, remember, these are very helpful. They actually help guide you to just select whatever you need to select. Now, we still need to select everything. That's why I'm used to just selecting a box around my entire a part that will select everything from the models to the uh, wireframe. But for our sake, let me go ahead and come over here. You'll notice that each bubble stands for something. For example, this is all the solids. This is all the polygonal mesh. This is for the surface curves. And it has the option to select all solids or only solid entities, whatever one you select. For our sake, we're going to select the top left for all solids. You'll see that all the solids are selected, but not the geometry. Then I want you to come over here and select all wireframe entities over here. And that will select all the wireframe entities. So now you have everything selected. And then select end selection. So this is the Translate 3D. You notice how it opens up as Translate 3D, but it's called Translate to Plane over there. So you're only copying one, whether you want to move it or copy it. And really, we want to move it. But let's go ahead and select Copy. And I have a good habit of doing this. This way, it shows me a preview of where it went to to where. And this is the source to destination. So this is how you look at it right now. So this is my top view, correct, in MasterCam. But I want that to be my front view. So basically, you would tell it, hey, I want the top view to become my front view. So the top view to become my front view. So you select front over here, and there you go. You can see a preview of that, and that looks good. You can see the preview looks good, but now you want to make sure to go back and select Move to make sure you're moving it, not copying it, and then select OK. And there you go. That looks good. Go to View and fit the screen real quick. So that looks good, except now the only thing is the origin. I want the origin to be over here and not in the top right. So very easy again, transform, 
and come over here and select move to origin and all you need to do is select this top left corner okay make sure you select the right top left corner right here there you go and then go to fit the screen now because it moved the entire part and there it is so zoom in make sure that it is right there in the top left corner and everything looks good so now we're all set and ready so we'll set up our part for machining in the next video